Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of this tape is to focus your attention on the problem of spreading disease during the treatment of dental patients by means of the common carrier saliva. Saliva is a colorless body fluid and therefore may appear invisible when dried on animate surfaces such as the patient's face or on the operator's hands and on inanimate surfaces such as dental instruments, the bracket tray or office equipment. The intimacy of the relationship between the dental patient and the dental health care provider is unmatched in any other type of patient health care. We spend 30 minutes or longer, the average length of a dental appointment, with our faces 10 inches from a body cavity laden with microorganisms. We rebreathe the patient's breath. We are showered with the aerosols generated from our equipment in the patient's mouth. We are splashed by and our fingers soak in patients' microorganism-laden saliva, blood, and dental plaque. As a means of dramatizing the fate of a patient's saliva, with all of its potential to threaten other patients, the dental professional's health, as well as career, we will add a red dye to our patient's saliva and now invite you to observe a few minutes of his dental treatment. What if saliva were red? Fortunately, or unfortunately perhaps, saliva is colorless and therefore may appear harmless. We become so used to saliva that we don't see it anymore. Sometimes we notice its moisture, more as an inconvenience in completing our dental treatment. The rule often inappropriately followed regarding saliva is out of sight, out of mind. This type of complacency may be dangerous, even life-threatening to the health of your patients and to your own health, as well as damaging to your career. Of course, we cannot see the teeming numbers of microorganisms living and even reproducing in saliva. Perhaps if we could see all these microorganisms in saliva, we would have second thoughts about the hazards we might bring home to our family and friends on our skin, hair, and clothing. As dental professionals, we have intimate contact with many patient saliva every day. The indifference we often show towards the potential spread of infection by means of saliva should be addressed. It has been well established that saliva serves as a vehicle for carrying most types of microorganisms. Perhaps you've forgotten that even one milliliter of saliva from a healthy individual contains more than 50 million microorganisms. In a typical dental practice, we may treat 20 patients a day. As we continue to treat 20 patients every day, in seven working days, we probably will encounter 42 patients harboring either pathogenic streptococci or staphylococci, 14 patients with coliform organisms in their mouth, and 35 patients with either pathogenic hemophilus or the pneumonia organism. Five to 25 percent of our patients harbor the influenza or other respiratory viruses. Herpes viruses, types one and two, are frequently found as transients in the human oral cavity. 
Every 75 working days, you can expect to treat one patient harboring the tuberculosis organism. As if these pathogens were not enough, we can certainly expect the occasional saliva containing the spirochete of syphilis or the gonorrhea organism. Of even greater concern are the patients we hear so much about now, diseased with or incubating the virus of AIDS or any of the four types of viral hepatitis. The fact is that you are at a greater risk in acquiring disease from your patients than of transmitting or spreading disease among your patients. Did you know that if you treat 20 patients a day, you will treat one hepatitis B carrier every seven working days? Do you think that this carrier's saliva will look or feel any different than saliva from your healthy patients? Approximately 10% of all persons who contract the type B viral hepatitis become carriers, some for a lifetime. Can you imagine that if you contract hepatitis B and become a carrier, what devastating effects this might have on your career or home life? Early in the 1980s, the American Dental Association was among the first of all healthcare organizations to strongly advocate the immediate use of the newly released, safe, and effective hepatitis B vaccine for all at-risk members of the dental profession. Perhaps we should be concerned enough about saliva to use barrier protection for all intraoral procedures, concerned enough to be vaccinated against hepatitis B, concerned enough to encourage all members of the dental health care community to do the same. Since we currently have no reliable method for determining which of our patients may be harboring infectious disease microorganisms in their saliva, we are really left with one safe alternative. We must assume that all patients are potentially dangerous to the health care provider. Since this assumption is our only safe alternative, we must react immediately and consistently in a positive way, or we must be prepared to suffer the consequences, whether they be ethical, legal, or worse. If you use any of the same improper infectious disease control procedures you have just observed with this dental team, you should be prepared to respond to the following or similar situations. Entering into litigation with a patient to defend your infection control procedures. Answering your infant daughter's pediatrician when he asks you if her herpes meningitis could possibly have been brought home from your dental office. Contracting a fatal disease from your dental patient. The following guidelines should be practiced routinely by dental personnel in order to prevent the personal and environmental contamination you have just witnessed. Review each patient's medical history, including exposure to illness before each appointment. Use only instruments that have been sterilized, stored, and handled aseptically. Use disposable covers on surfaces and items touched during patient treatment or disinfect them appropriately. Use barrier protection, including masks, gloves, and protective eyewear with every patient. Wear a short-sleeved smock or uniform which is not to be worn home. Shoes worn in the office should not be worn home. Keep long hair back, away from the treatment area. Maintain chain of asepsis during patient treatment by refraining from touching nose, eyes, glasses, hair, clothing, phone, charts, pencils, or chairs. Avoid contaminating items outside the operatory, such as charts, dispensers, and doors with contaminated hands. Wash before eating. Disinfect the operatory safely and thoroughly after each patient treatment. Employ special precautions for known infected patients and for high-risk patients. Take and or update appropriate vaccines as needed against hepatitis B, measles, mumps, polio, influenza, tetanus, and rubella. Saliva and its potential for transmitting disease is a problem that you will face during your entire professional career. Make a decision now to effectively address this problem. 
One way is to implement the guidelines just presented in this film. In addition, constantly review the literature for future recommendations concerning infection control. In this way, you will protect yourself, your patients, your family, as well as have the satisfaction of knowing that you are demonstrating appropriate professional responsibility. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.